So, my very first devlog ever, and the game doesn't even have a name, and it's very early in the stages. But the genre is survival and colony simulation. I recently stumbled upon this game called Medieval Dynasty, and I just love it. The only issue for me is it's not multiplayer, and I love playing with my friends, so I thought to myself, maybe I could try and make some. So from here, I'm going to be focusing on the networking and the building. Uh, also, just for good measure, I'm using Cynthia assets from the asset store on this project. I really like the simplistic look, and they're just super easy to work with. So let's get started. So first of all, the networking. I have worked with networking before using Photon's pun or Photon Unity networking, but it's rather old and it's not really that strong. So for networking, I'm going to be using Fishnet. I've looked at a lot of different solutions, but Fishnet, Fishnet just seems simple out of the box and with a lot of modern and great features. It basically seems like a newer version of, of pun, at least to the untrained eye. <laughs> <sighs> What the hell is a prediction serializer? And also Fishnet just has the most wonderful community, which is always just willing to help. And that's just great. So I've set up a basic scene with the basic Fishnet networking setup. I've set some spawn points and I've just made a basic character controller script that disables itself if you are not the owner of it. This is very basic multiplayer setup and it's super easy using Fishnet. I've also very briefly just set up an animation controller for the player and taken some animations from Mixamo. Fishnet just has a script you can just attach to network the animation state, so this was just a super easy and quick setup. So now I'll be working on the building aspect, and since buildings and structures are going to play a big part in the colony automation process, uh, I want to get this down fairly early, and since I've never made anything like this, and no matter the less multiplayer, I think it's gonna be a horrible experience. Alright, so here I made a simple script that should be quite adaptable to pretty much any sort of thing I want to build and... Alright, so here I made a simple script that is quite adaptable to any object I believe. It basically has a custom list of the components that it's needing to be built. Uh, and once they're all there, we'll actually build the structure. It just basically replaces the object with an actual other object. And here you can just see that I went on to basically adapt that same principle, but to a whole building instead. So when all the parts are built, it will actually, again, once again, remove this ghost house and replace it with the finished house. Now, I also went ahead and made the house uh, much better looking with the Cynthia assets. And then I also implemented the placement feature of the houses. This is actually fairly complicated, but to Make it short, it has a distance from your player that it can be. If you're looking at the ground, it will just obviously display it above that ground. On the ghost itself, it actually has some raycast points, which I can define as many as I want. And it raycasts down from these and takes the highest point and places the house on that, so the house cannot be placed inside of the ground. And then it actually also does a check to check if it is colliding with anything that it shouldn't be able to be placed inside, or if these the distance between some of these raycast points is too great. Because that would mean it's on a steep hill or something where we don't want to be able to place the house. And when you're able to place it, you're also able to, or when it's at least displaying in blue, you, you can click the mouse button and it will actually place down the house, which you can then go ahead and build and, and everything works as you just saw before. In the end, I also just went ahead and networked all of this or made sure it all worked via the, net, via the network and, and that so far is working perfectly. So, so far, so good. So now that the basic networking setup and the building mechanics are sort of out of the way or at least to a point where we can uh, have them wait a bit till we fletch them all out. Let's go on to some of the main meat of the game. Say it with me, of course, it's the NPC. Look, it's the NPCs. I don't care what you say, I want to work on NPCs. So for a long time, I've actually really wanted to try and work with state machines, and I feel like this is the perfect option. Our villagers or NPCs will have different things to do at different times of the day. Uh, for example, like working, they'll idling, socializing. I really want each and every NPC to really run their own life. Uh, and the best way to do this is through state machines. This way I can switch around states saying, for example, if their hunger level is low, they can go into a eating state where they'll go, they'll locate some food that's available to them and they'll go and eat the food, get their hunger up and they'll jump back to the state they were in before. For example, if they're in a working state, they need to know which work is assigned to them, if they even have work assigned to them and so on and so forth. And there's gonna be a lot of states, um, it's gonna be interesting. So for now, I'm just gonna be focusing on setting up the main part of the state machine, which is something I don't know about at all. And I also gotta figure out uh, exactly how I want to set up each individual states. 
So I actually started setting up my state machine and it really helped me understand the state machine through this video by iHeartGameDev. And if you want to look at how you can make a state machine yourself, I would greatly recommend this video. It was super easy to understand, super easy to set up and get started. Let's start with just looking at how a state machine is built. So first of all, we have the model behavior script, which is going to be on the object. Uh, and this is pretty much what's going to be handling all the states and switching of all the states and, and all these functions. Then we need all the different states to originate from some sort of base state. And this is pretty much how the whole tree of states is going to be set up. Now, this is how it's explained in I had game devs video. And this is pretty much how every state machine is set up uh, as far as I know. Uh, this being said, he's doing it through uh, the base state being an abstract class and not deriving from anything. And by doing this, you are actually not able to serialize the states in the inspector. And I know to some of you, this might not make a whole lot of sense when I'm saying this, but this is because I want to be able to also define states through the inspector. And you can't do that with abstract classes. They cannot be serialized or shown in the inspector. So the way I worked around this through Unity's own community helping me, I had to do it through setting up each individual state as a scriptable object, which is based on the abstract state. And this is how I got around it. As shown on the screen right now, I've also set up a simple schedule uh, for the NPC. So we're able to set certain states at certain different times. And obviously also uh, set up a basic day and night cycle. I've also set up an NPC stat script that keeps track of his energy, hunger and social stats as well as his overall mood. Um, this also keeps track of his skills. So when he is instantiated or spawned into the server, he has uh, right now five different skills, you know, like chopping wood, cooking, so on, uh, which will be randomized from between one and three. So one, two or three, but then he can have a, a unique trait, which uh, can be, for example, a cook. And therefore he will have somewhere between two or four uh, higher level in cooking. The only state I really set up was the idling state for now, where he just walks around a bit in a defined zone and chooses a random spot and walks over there. From this point, it's going to be fairly simple for me to at least add more states to the NPC, as well as I've just set up the networking. So now both players can see him just roaming around in these different states. So at this point, we've set up the player. We've set up some networking. We set up a building system and I've set up a NPC system with a state machine on it. And this is really as far as I've gotten for the first week. Uh, I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. I'm really hoping this kind of video can at least help motivate other people to also get started with their projects or maybe give some inspiration to what you guys can do. Any feedback in the comments is much appreciated. I've never made a video like this. This is very new to me. So I really hope this was at least of somewhat an enjoyable level. And then uh, hopefully you guys will leave a like and then best case scenario, subscribe and leave a comment as well. And thank you so much for watching. I truly do appreciate it. And I wish you a wonderful day.